This is Ton618, the biggest black hole ever discovered. You guys really wanted me to go check this out, so we're gonna see if we can fly into it. Hello everybody, my name's Calvin. Welcome back to Space Engine. Today we're going through your guys' suggestions again, so let's go. All right, so here is Ton618. It is a very massive black hole. Here is the scale of Ton618 and the solar system, so you can see how big it really is. And if we turn on the orbit, you can see how many like different stars and stuff are going around it. And the reason it's so bright is because it's shooting out matter, it's super hot matter on the top and bottom. I um, mean, so if we speed up time, you can actually see it move. Let's turn down the exposure so we can kind of see better. There you go. So you can see it's like moving. Um, it's shooting matter out. So let's get closer to the actual black hole, which is in the center of this. It's kind of hard to see in there, almost because it's like black, like a black hole. But I wonder what it's going to look like if we try to fly right next to it. It almost like, it feels like it's pushing me away. Oh, okay, that's very bright. We just died. So it's like you fly into it and it just goes white. No one knows what the inside of a black hole looks like. But let's go inside um, these funnels here. And this is what it looks like in here. That's kind of freaky. So that's what it looks like going inside here. And then let's fly into it and see what happens. Let's fly like on this edge so we can kind of see what's happening more. So it looks like the blackness is like consuming us. And all these particles too. I feel like we're an interstellar going inside the black hole. Whoa, I don't even know what's happening. Ah, okay, we died. We got a suggestion to go to the Andromeda galaxy, so let's do it. Andromeda. Andromeda is one of the coolest galaxies that you can actually see with a telescope from Earth. You can see here it is, and here's a real picture of Andromeda. So it actually looks very similar to the Milky Way. So yeah, here's Andromeda, and the Milky Way is actually right there. You can see it from um, Andromeda. So let's go in Andromeda and try to find a planet. Here's a nebula that it's generated in the Andromeda galaxy. Is this a real nebula? No, this is a procedurally generated nebula. Let's turn on realistic lighting. So it's actually a lot dimmer than it looks, which is kind of sad. Okay, let's go like where there's a lot of stars in the center. Oh, look at this nebula, dude. I wanna go in this nebula. Okay, that's very yellow. And we're gonna find a planet in the nebula. So here's a star. Um, this star has no planets. That's very sad. This planet looks cool. Has rings on it. So let's go land on this planet. Actually, let's go land on the night side so we can kind of see... Whoa, those volcanoes? Let's go to the volcanoes. Dude, look at this. That's so cool. Okay, so if you're night here, look how yellow the sky is because of the nebula we're in. And those are actually the rings right there. That's crazy. So like, let's zoom out, get a wide FOV. And the night sky is very yellow. So that's what the night sky looks like in a procedurally generated nebula in the in the Andromeda galaxy. We got a suggestion to look for comets in Space Engine. So let's type in Halley's Comet. Okay, Halley Comet right here. So let's go to Halley's Comet and see what it looks like in Space Engine. I'm actually interested. It looks just like a rock. That's not very interesting. Um, I wonder what, if we can get like the trail on it at all. Oh yeah, you can kind of see it's glowing blue. Um, I wonder if we go, like we turn up the exposure a ton, if we can see that blueness come off it. No, not really. It's more when we have it in HDR mode, you can see there's a little bit of blue on it. Um, what if we land on Halley's Comet? Okay, we're actually on Halley's Comet right now. So the next time that Halley's Comet will be next to Earth is in 2062. So I actually want to type in the time and set it to 2062. Oh, we're like way ahead of time. 2062. So here's Halley's Comet right now, and here's the Earth and the Moon in 2062. So if you're on Halley's Comet, and we'll go to the back side where it's dark, and then we'll try to zoom in on Earth from here. So here is the Earth and the Moon. Um, and if you zoom in, there it is, the great blue ball. There it is. So we're now on Halley's Comet, looking at Earth. We got another suggestion to go to Titan because it's gonna be our next home. For sure, let's go to Titan and see what it looks like. Here's Titan, Jupiter's moon. 
Um, and I'm interested to see what the surface looks like. I'm actually gonna fly down below the atmosphere and try to see what we can find down here. Okay, so you can see there's Saturn. You can see it during the day. Oh, well, look, it's liquid. What? You can see the C's composition is C2H6. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's methane. So it looks like it's completely covered in a methane ocean. That's crazy. Was oh, there any land? Oh, is this land? Yes, there is land on it too. So not all of it is ocean. Some of it's land. Whoa, you can see these sunsets get so red because methane is a very, very greenhouse gas. Gas. <laughs> so, oh, is that the sun? That's what it looks like. The sun is so small from here. That's crazy. So there's Titan. Um, I mean, the sun looks brighter in space. But yeah, there's Titan. Norway Mapper says, how about fly to Mount Everest? We'll try it. Okay, we'll go to Earth. Now, Mount Everest is about... It's around this back, so let's speed up time. Okay, that's going very fast. So it's right between India and China, so it's gonna be over here. Let's turn off the clouds so we can kind of see better. This, these, this is the Himalayan mountain range, I believe. Right here. I'm not sure which one is actually Mount Everest, uh, but we will go look at this mountain range and see. Whoa, it definitely could be one of these. Like this could be it right here. I have no idea. So it's loading the best it can. Um, that does look like the tallest or this one. Could be Mount Everest too? Or maybe that one over there. Maybe this one's Mount Everest. I honestly have no idea. Not a avid mountain climber. I'm pretty sure it's this one. Actually, I don't know. Someone in the comments, please let me know if it's one of those two or I'm completely off. But thank you for the suggestion. Giant Smash says, visit a neutron star. That would be cool. That would be cool. Okay, so we're gonna go to the Black Widow Pulsar. So this is a Pulsar star that rotates extremely fast. So it's a neutron star right here, binary. So there are actually two. Binary with a planet? What? A brown dwarf. So here's a brown dwarf and a neutron star together. This is what a brown dwarf looks like in Space Engine. Pretty cool. And then the Black Widow Neutron Star right here. And if we see, it's the gravity is so strong on it and it's so dense that it has an effect similar to a black hole, which is really cool. So they spin super, super fast. That's like one of their things. I wanna see its orbit line with the... So it looks like it is technically binary, but the, uh, the brown door is really orbiting around it. So there's a Neutron Star and a brown dwarf. We got a suggestion to go to Stevenson 218, the biggest star ever found. Let's go to it. So Stevenson 218 is a red hypergiant and you can see that because it's so big, the shape is irregular, which is really cool. So if you turn it on auto photo mode, it's not perfectly circular because it's like moving underneath the surface. So if we play time, I wonder if it's actually gonna like move. So it looks like it just rotates. It doesn't actually like change shape. But there's the biggest star ever known, and that's what it looks like. I want to see... It doesn't have any known planets, but there it is, Stevenson 218. It is completely massive. Here's scales. This is the sun compared to Stevenson 218. All right, your daily planet Mars says, please try TOI 1452b. It's a water candidate planet. All right, let's look it up. TOI 1452b. Right here. So it actually showed up. Let's go to it. And there it is. It's a temperate super Neptune. So it's not a water planet. I wonder if it has... So I'm sure not a lot is known about this planet. Actually, it just kind of generates random facts about it. So this is what it's guessing because it is proven that this planet exists. It's just not known a lot about it. We do know the star exists too. It's a real object, but it kind of looks like water. Like if you look at it, it looks kind of like an ocean. It is pretty cool. So I want to look at some of the storms on here. They get pretty detailed. Um, I wonder if you go inside. Oh, it's water underneath. It's an ice giant. That's what it is because it's a super Neptune. So if you actually go underneath, there is, it looks like water. I'm sure it is. Um, so I guess it is water. 
All right, thank you so much for watching this video. If you want to see more Space Engine, leave a like on this video so I know you want more. Special thanks to my Patreon supporters, Borg. If you'd like to support me on Patreon, the link is in the description. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.